Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening, good night, good afternoon. Good be to you wherever you happen to be. And welcome back to another episode of Gundamonium. Gundamonium does things and stuff. As we can see today, we're going to be building something that uh, is both grim dark and World War One at the same time. And by that I mean um, we're doing the Death Corpse of Creed. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. First things first, this little dude was actually a totally free STL file that I downloaded from my mini factory from a creator called dakadaka.store. This is in no way a paid promotion or anything like that, but I wanted to let everyone know in case you maybe wanted to get it and print it yourself. Honestly, the details on this STL file are impeccable and I recommend it. Also, it's free. So if you're like me and you just got a 3D printer, I, I, would, I, would, give it a, I would give it a try. File comes with a bunch of free options. There's a plasma gun, a bolt gun, a las pistol, a plasma sword, a chain sword, a power fist, and a shovel. However, because this is gonna be a Krieger that we're painting, he's gonna have the shovel. He's gonna have his trusty entrenchment tool. Because I think that we can all agree that when we're thinking of the death corpse of Krieg, we're thinking of entrenchment tools. I regrettably don't know too much about the death corpse of Krieg probably because they're relatively new and they weren't really available for purchase from Games Workshop until really recently, I think. It wasn't until the last release of Kill Team that they got official models. I think before that you had to get them from Forge World and um, yeah, I cannot afford that. What I do know about the Death Corps of Krieg though is that they are basically a mixture of World War I French infantry, World War I German infantry, and then of course the uh, typical grim darkness that we've all grown to love and adore kind of atypical to both the german and french uniforms he comes with this pretty badass suit of armor he almost looks like a uh like a french cuirassier that has dismounted from his horse and he's just about to pummel someone into being a french revolutionary i could be wrong though i do know that kind of in the mid-war period the germans did have some sturm troopen especially at Verdun, that I think wore some pretty gnarly looking body armor, but I, I could be wrong about that. It's kind of hard to find images of German infantry wearing Sturmtrooper armor without getting um, a bit into subject matter that I don't want to get into, if that makes any sense. Since I still don't fully understand how to do NMM, non-metallic metal, I just use my metallic paints. I think that they, they fit the bill. But also to give him kind of a real rugged battlefield look, I dirtied up all of the armor with a really watered down brown paint just to kind of dull it up and make it look like he's been in the thick of it for a long time. According to Google image searches, Krieger weapons tend to be made out of wood, but um, I thought that red was cool because it's kind of a contrast. Also, <laughs> I, I like this mini quite a bit, but I do think it's funny that he is rushing into battle with all of his gear as if, you know, a Krieger wouldn't be just in a trench most of their lives and would have their packs probably down in a safe place but whatever doesn't matter still looks good but yeah now on to the diorama itself so the overall theme of this diorama is well what i like to think it is is that this krieger is a part of a larger assault kind of like an atypical desperate assault that we would read about that happened during the uh, the great war the war to end all wars and so basically a wave of humans assaulting some sort of a fortified position, probably held by some chaos cultists. But for this particular section of the battlefield, what I like to imagine happened is one of the Imperial kind of officers got really, really fed up with the situation and the stalemate. Uh, so what he did was he called in one of these. However, instead of calling in coordinates and having them shell it from the top, what they did was they just got the commander to drive it almost point blank up to this particular pillbox slash hardened location, pointed the gun straight at it and let rip and probably gave everyone inside and outside of the uh, pillbox a migraine headache. And now because there is a giant gaping hole in the defensive line, our hero is just going to charge in there with his shovel and uh, show some cultists the emperor's light. I can kind of make a first hand account of how good one of those basilisks works because when I was a wee little teenager, my friends and I used to play Warhammer 40k together, and uh, most of my friends played Space Marines and I played Guard. So basically every round I would just get completely slaughtered. But when I bought a Basilisk, 
um, and kind of even things out a bit because I could fire indirectly at the Space Marines. And sometimes I would still lose, but sometimes the um, the Basilisk would make a hit and then on the hit dice it would score another hit so it wouldn't stray at all and I would just wipe out like seven, six Space Marines at a time and that felt really good. But then their Cell Marines would come in or their Terminators would Deep Strike and uh, yeah, it was bye bye Imperial Guard. But until then, like sometimes, I mean, I just, I love Basilisks, they're really cool. All right, now that that little tangent is over, let's uh, let's get back to the build here, shall we? I finally cracked out the Vallejo Earth texture again for this one. I don't know, I've been neglecting it for so long. I forgot how good the coverage on it was and it sped up the process of this whole build by about three, day three days. But of course, earth texture is not enough because we're dealing with a kind of a entrenched, crazy battlefield. So once all of that had dried, I put down some watered down PVA glue and scattered even more rocks about. Also, what is a trench without miles upon miles upon miles of barbed wire? So I got some sticks. Well, I made some sticks, marked off two little dots on each of them, and just drilled a hole through there. I also learned an important lesson about not drilling for too long against your mat because I totally drilled through one of the posts and uh, put a hole in my mat. Just another uh, TIL on the Gundamodium channel. Anyways, holes aside, I cut a length of the Gale Force 9 barbed wire and then shoved some PVA glues into our pre-made holes and then just fed the barbed wire right through there. Simple as, really. Actually, it was pretty simple, but it also looked great. No, no complaints. I did almost totally glue them together though, as we can see from the footage. Once they were down securely, they also of course got a black primer. And then I bent the damaged section of barbed wire into the crater to look like, you know, it had been destroyed by recent shelling and started painting the entire scene. Pillbox was first treated to a combination of dark and light gray, as well as the scattered rocks. And then I painted the posts of the barbed wire brown from wood and the rest of the ground of the battlefield kind of got a like a brownish tan it looked really light when it was first being put down but it, it darkened up quite a bit which was super beneficial also i want to add some weathering to the concrete and i don't know if anyone else has ever seen this or noticed this but really old concrete seems to have weird white streaks in it all the time i don't know what that's called maybe it's bird poop i don't know but it's just something that i've noticed over the years and so I wanted to replicate it on this one because I assume if the Death Corps of Krieg are there, this siege has been going on probably for 432 years. And then I painted all of the metal greeblies, a bolt gun metal, and got on to actually my favorite part in any scene that I do, which is just to paint all of the little rocks a bunch of different colors. I can't really tell you why, but painting little rocks for three hours while listening to podcasts is just my happy place. I honestly, I recommend everyone else try it too, because it's so therapeutic. Just go outside to your local quarry, bring, bring some paints and just start painting rocks. It just feels so good. But to finish everything off, it all had to be taken down a tone. In order to achieve that, everything just got smothered in dark wash from Army Painter. And then to simulate years and years of buildup of rainwater and just blown up dirt, I gave all of the bullet holes some rainwater drizzle and then covered up all of my messy painting with a couple layers of black paint to clean up the edges and then proceeded to glue the top of the pillbox to itself this was also around the time that i decided i wanted to try something totally new and add a completely new element to the battlefield to do this, I grabbed some pre-used fabric softener from when I uh, softened my fabric in the wash. I tore off a really, really small piece. And as we can see, I just started to kind of twist it into a really small strand. And then I glued it in place so that it would keep that form. After that had dried, I gave it a very dark and then a very light wash from the base to the top. And then I glued it into the newest crater to act as kind of smoke rising from the crater. Honestly, it was super simple and I think it turned out really, really well. And then of course, the final piece of the puzzle was our main character, the Krieger. And once he had dried, I officially called it Dunzo.
And there it is. Our diorama is now completely done. I hope that you have all enjoyed your stay until this point. I really want to do more 40k themed dioramas going forward. Actually, yeah, I do want to do more 40k. What I would love to make, though, is um, some sort of a hanger for all of my many, many, many gunpla kits that are just standing around. I feel like now that we've started painting them, we should also probably give them proper homes. I do have one in mind that I would really, really like to make a diorama for, and I'm currently trying to think of a cool way to achieve that, so hopefully that comes soon. And to round out the rest of our footage, I'm just going to leave it here because there's just some, some great shots. If you've managed to kind of sit through my rants till this point, I want to say a heartfelt thank you. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, so um, I double love you all today. I hope that you all get showered in candy and kisses and um, chocolates. I've already done all of that to myself because I am painfully, painfully single right now. But yeah, I hope that you all have a great week and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.